Hello and welcome to another Vantech Tuesday, a series in which I try and answer your technical questions or really just about any question really about van life or anything like that um, from Instagram and uh, email and also from the comments section of our videos. So yes, the very first thing to notice is we're back on the normal channel. And that was an overwhelming thing. I put a poll out on the community tab um, and said, you know, do you guys want to bring it all back together again? Because what we've kind of worked out is it was a bit of a knee-jerk reaction in moving Vantech Tuesday off this channel. Um, yeah, the channel name's great because it should always be about, you know, John and Mandy and Cooper. But... Uh, the Vantech stuff was kind of like just really me answering questions and now and again Mandy are chirping. She's currently walking Cooper at the moment, that's why there's uh, no one but me around. Um, but yeah, I think it should stay on this channel. It started on this channel, so it's going to stay on this channel. So there we go. And if anyone wants to say anything bad about it, then you just get blocked, banned and deleted. And, um, and that's just the way we deal with nasty people. So that said, here we are in our normal place. Should we get on with the questions now? Um, first question. What was that stumpy TV antenna you kept mentioning about that you changed your van over to? Uh, yeah, I think it was in the video description, but if not, it's definitely in the video description down below. Um, I think it's about £10 or something off Amazon. You can get them off eBay as well. And it's just the best thing ever that the stupid directional um status antenna on the roof where you have to align it vertically or horizontally and then move it around so it got the best signal and all that kind of stuff the stumpy aerial sticks on the roof and then it, the telly just works wherever you are so like winner winner um i i, I think the the worst thing that i've had to do is i've stuck it down with sycoflex so it doesn't come off the roof because it's an aluminium roof um, and the magnet obviously doesn't stick to aluminium. So yeah, other than that, it's brilliant. Uh, next question. Your Truma water heater, I presume you mean the Truma boiler, um, you said it didn't get your van very warm. Have you sorted that now? Yes, we have. Um, and I believe that you, you basically wanted to know roughly what we did. We sorted it by changing, there are four outlets on the Truma, Truma systems. In the old van we had a 4E, which means it's got electric as well as gas. This one we got a 6E, so yeah, it's electric and gas. Um, and they have four outlets at the top. Um, essentially the two lower outlets and then two upper outlets. And the two upper outlets get hotter. So obviously heat rises, it's a furnace inside, just like a normal boiler you'd have in your house and the lower outlets generally should be put on shorter runs so that they're close to where you need the heat already whereas the upper outlets obviously you can have much longer runs or fairly longer runs anyway and um, because you'll get hotter air going out of them which means that the longer the run is you will get some cooling and um, it just that's just the way things work but you're still going to get enough heat out of the back of those long runs so i swapped those round i reconfigured some of the runs so for example we had four outlets at the front of the van we don't need four outlets at the front of the van there was even two outlets which went around the bases of the seats um and i've just changed that now so i've reduced it all down to one outlet at the front and it blows air kind of towards the front and it works great so that meant i could make more pressure available um, for the rear outlets and i know people talk about the uh, balancing air pressure of it as long as there's pressure over the air blowing out that's fine um, i've spoken to a Truma engineer about this and got it all cleared and everything like that so there's no issues with it i then found that there was vents to um, the outside part of the fridge <laughs> Um, and the outside part of um, the locker where you change the water cassette. And I was like, um, why do that? The toilet cassette, sorry. So we've changed the configuration of all the outlets now. So we've got fewer outlets, but more heat is getting to where the outlets we've concentrated on and the van's staying warmer longer. And uh, it's actually using a lot less gas as well. And another thing, um, it was uh, Reese from um, Curbside Crafters who told me about this. He 
kind of fixes these things and fits them for a living um, he said one of the things he noticed from our system was that the boiler itself didn't have an air intake system so it wasn't able to suck air in from the open kind of areas of the van it was using more or less the air from the box it was in which also has a slight amount of access to the cupboard where we fill it with water and some drop valves for the gas so there was a little bit of area got access to but not a moment and not enough apparently so i fitted another louvered kind of like grill drilled some holes and fitted the grill over it and like i say now it uses much less gas so we've used literally um one bottle in three weeks and before that we'd used two bottles in two weeks so obviously massive big difference it's still getting bloody cold as well so we're still down to minus zero minus two because we are right at the tops in the in the peak district so it gets quite cold overnight um so yeah really impressed with that hope that helps obviously these people that build the vans they build them generically for most uses and maybe they're thinking most of the time you're going to be plugged in on electric on a campsite and these things don't matter so much don't exactly know why but for the last two vans i've had to change it and the changes have been you know dramatic so they've really helped Right, um, next couple of questions um, are going to be really quick ones to answer. Uh, what is your new e-bike make and what water filter do you use? Um, the e-bike and the water filter are going to be mentioned in our next vlog. So in a couple of days time, Thursday. And um, those are going to be kind of like a bit of an overview video. And I figured what we're going to do is that the Berkey filter you all know about. And, and there's not a great deal to it. We'll cover that one. In the vlog um, but the e-bikes I'll make an uh, and dedicated review video um, on the e-bikes and I'll shove that over on the Gandhi John channel so we'll talk them about them in this week's vlog um, but for a more in-depth video kind of like uh, you know review that'll be on the Gandhi John channel because I mean like it's an e-bike it's gadgets so there we go um, next question what batteries do you use and why did you choose them uh, and this is the I get this quite a lot I needed batteries in three days the country was about to shut down so I contacted the company I'd last bought the batteries for the AGM batteries for the last van which I got them if you remember on a bit of a kind of like I need them now because I had to take the lithium batteries out so I've used them for you know quite a few months being in the other van being away and they worked fantastic the company was um close to where i used to live in manchester it's a company that's been going 20 odd years so i kind of trust them and i just rang them up and said can i have two batteries and we picked them up on the way kind of like back into the uk up here um they're just generic batteries i don't think they're anything special they are 120 amp hour uh, and they're agm batteries so other than that um, no real kind of like amazing spec about them they're not carbide or carbon or anything like that uh, they're just agm batteries but they work really well and i think it was two for like 300 quid or something like that so yeah brilliant um what i will do is it was an ebay thing anyway so you can buy them on ebay i'll try and link them down there if they're still available so if you are interested at least you can have a look Okay, next question is, what sat-nav do you use and does it use the van's dimensions and weight to route you? Yes, it does. And it's the Garmin 770. Again, I'll link it in the description down below so you can go and have a look at that product. Um, and it's been absolutely brilliant. Now and again, we noticed uh, more so when I know the area I'm traveling around, but we've put it in as a destination anyway. I've noticed it will not always choose the most direct route should i say even when i know that you know the height restriction and all that of the van wouldn't have changed anything um so it's not the best at routing economically is what i'd say but it takes you on some amazing wild goose routes and stuff like that and the other beauty about it is that you can get a little kit for it that includes a wireless camera for the back you know like a backup camera or just a rear view camera um, and that all comes through the same screen and everything like that. So it is pretty cool that you can do that without having all these extra screens up front. So it's not bad. I suppose an added bonus of it, um, the map updates and things like that are all free. And it even gives you live traffic information. Uh, we've been driving through, I think it was Belgium or somewhere like that. Animals on the road, beware. 
and we're like we can't see anything and then like within half a mile or a mile uh, the police had shut the motorway down they were trying to catch a cow so yeah pretty good really right john in your wiring video recently where you showed us how your new motorhome all wiring and everything set up you showed us some barrel type fuse breakers that you said are absolutely brilliant uh, what are they and where do i get them um ultimately they are breaker fuses like you would have in a home electric system so rather than a fuse like a 12 volt fuse you get in a car which we do have some here um, for things like the lights and things like that but these other fuses if the fuse pops it trips the breaker just like in a house then once you fix whatever the problem is you can click that back into position and it carries on no worrying about changing fuses and stuff like that and the beauty about these things is they come in all sorts of sizes so if you want one for your inverter then you need to get you know a 200 amp fuse then you can get them or if you want one for your solar panel 30 amps you can get them in that size as well so i think they're really good um again you know not really expensive and you know should you want to work on your solar panel or your electric system and things like that and you want to isolate things then you just trip the actual breaker yourself so you know you're kind of separating everything so it's all nice and safe to work on as well oh the next one's due to toilets <laughs> how effective are laundry tabs that you've been using in your luca set uh they are very effective actually for what they are considerably better than i ever thought um it's i suppose done for something that's cheap we've cut corners because we change the loo you know every few days refresh it and the the chemical you put in there and the quantities of chemical and stuff like that that can work out to be a pound a time so if you're changing your toilet every few days you know replenishing the liquids in there you've lost a pound before you know it you could be spending 15 pounds a month you know just by cleaning out your toilet whereas with the laundry tab you chuck one or two in there and not only does it it eliminates the smell a little bit i wouldn't say it's as good as the chemicals um but it's certainly good um but it certainly allows everything to be cleaned out quite easily and breaks things down quite easily inside and you can get you know like a pack of 30 or 40 for a couple of quid or something like that so it really works out quite cheap um next question uh, john what drone do you use and are you going to upgrade it to the new blah 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 um i use the mavic air the original one and i've had it for over two years now and it's had its scrapes with trees and the ground and some other things and it's still good still works perfectly okay so i've got no real need to change it yes i know the mavic air 2 or the mavic pro 2 both have amazing battery life and the distance from the controller to the drone is amazing as well and they come with some slightly better features and things like that but i've got four batteries for my drone so i can still fly it for you know about 60 minutes ish yeah I'd probably have to bring it down after 15 minutes and change the batteries whereas the new one supposedly can fly for 35 minutes but it's an awful lot when you're talking a thousand pound to change a drone just to fly it a bit longer and do some more tricks and for the videos we do most of the time i'll put the drone up only for maybe five ten minutes while i take a few shots and then it's put back in my pocket and i carry on and i might not use it again for another two weeks sometimes yeah so maybe what you do is you look on ebay for someone's you know old drone that they're selling mavic air is brilliant um and get yourself a decent bargain with all the batteries and things like that just a thought okay the last question is john i've got a truma system just like yours and i'm thinking of upgrading it to the truma inet system i know you had it in your last van would you say it's worthwhile now yeah in the last van um, we could text you know if we were outside the van and it was cold or something we could text it to put the heating on hot water and stuff like that even get a little bit of information about the voltages of the systems and whether the batteries were up to voltage whatever however one thing i would say is it's got built-in bluetooth and we found the bluetooth to be a problem with the latest iphones so anything over an iphone 10 you might connect on bluetooth and then it would just disconnect and nothing could happen again so 
we only really have used it for texting, which means you've got to have a SIM card in it, pay as you go, whatever, and there's an extra cost in there. The Bluetooth did work relatively closely around the van, but yeah, if you're more than 10 meters away from the van, Bluetooth's not gonna work. So you always need that SIM card in there. With the SIM card, you didn't get all the features of the iNet. You only got all the features of the iNet with uh, Bluetooth. And then when you think about the cost of upgrading from a normal system like we've got in this one, the normal Truma system to an iNet, it's close to £400 just to be able to then Bluetooth in your van. Well, probably wouldn't be able to Bluetooth because it's still an iPhone 10, so wouldn't do that. And I've then got to put a SIM card in and text it when I want the heating on. For 400 quid now, it's something that we've talked about, Mandy and I, to do and um there's loads of other things we spend 400 quid on 400 quids you know like two-thirds of our monthly budget um and just getting in the van and turning the heating on and now we've made all the changes it can be freezing cold in the van if we've been out for a walk and we come back we put the heating on and you know by the time you've kind of like give it a couple of minutes and you've taken your coat off and the fans are all kicking in blowing the heat out it's fine so don't really worry about it so from our point of view, don't really think we would do it. Maybe if somebody gave me one for free, I might consider it. Um, but other than that, no. Um, if you are watching from Truma, I will quite gladly um, change our system to the um, 6D so that I can get a diesel heater with iNet. I'll make a video about it and everything. Oh yeah. But anyway, to everybody else, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions obviously do hit them up in the comments section down below uh, you can go to our website and then just fill out a contact form or you can get us on instagram as well and we'll try and uh, answer questions that way so for now you take care stay safe and i'll catch you in the next video bye